Thank you, President. Before I uh, carry on, I must let people know this will be about the COVID, the events of this last week, and we've all been hit by that quite hard, I think. I am, as you all know, triple vaccinated, and I'm a passionate believer in following science and medicine, uh, and the, all the um, obligations I've called publicly uh, that we follow, we unite behind our Premier, because divided we are weak. So in that context, I was delighted yesterday to see an informative answer to my friend, the Mar Honourable Martin Aldridge, who received a fulsome response to his question. He also got the government to table the advice from the Chief Health Officer regarding COVID restrictions and recommendations in Parliament. I found the second last paragraph of that advice illuminating and will quote it for the benefit of Hansard. Having recommended that mandates be applied to staff, the Chief Health Officer went on to say, it is not intended that mandatory vaccination directions will apply to members of Parliament who hold a unique status as elected representatives rather than employees. I'll read that again so it sinks in. It is not intended that mandatory vaccination directions will apply to members of Parliament who hold a unique status as elected representatives rather than employees. Now, that advice is dated the 11th of February 2022, two days before the government circulated its vaccination motion, which we then debated here in this chamber on the 15th of February, as a result of which one of our members was removed from this parliament. At no point did the government reveal that advice before or during our debate. I was completely unaware of the presence of this letter, as I'm sure were all of my respected colleagues in this chamber. Is this acceptable transparency? This is a government that has repeatedly reminded us that we must follow the medical advice, we must follow the science. I have been trying to get direct scientific evidence from the Chief Health Officer for some time now, and this has consistently been either denied or left to go quiet. Does this government prefer we, the members, be kept in the dark? Is there some gain to be had by leaving us uninformed? To have sat in this chamber, listening to the government proposing and supporting a motion such as that brought forward on Tuesday, while in possession of the medical advice that I have just read into Hansard, while not only failing to make that advice public to members, but failing to even acknowledge that it had been received, is simply unacceptable in a free democracy. Had I experienced this in the USSR, I would have seen this for what it is, a devious, disingenuous and downright underhanded. I will not agree that our government would stoop so low and therefore assume this is a simple oversight due to the workload they have taken upon themselves. On behalf of the democratic principle, however, I place on the record my condemnation of this act. I will continue to bring this and every lack of transparency alongside every other act of blatant hypocrisy I encounter to the attention of the WA public. One such area is the knowledge that while we here follow social distancing, proof of vaccination, mandates applied, loss of some functions of our wonderful house, expulsion of those who do not conform, at the same time, across the road in Duma House, ministers and others can enter and exit, staff can enter and exit, visitors can be entertained, all without proof of vaccination. If we look for a potential source of infection in this house, we need look no further than Duma House and its denizens, who appear to need less protection than we mortal beings. And how does government, in the face of this clear imbalance, this obvious double standard, justify themselves sitting quietly on highly relevant medical advice and allowing this House to debate a motion without the full and pertinent facts before it? Have we been blindsided? Have we been duped? I, on the crossbench, am deeply grateful that I am allowed free speech, my mind to be unrestricted in searching for truth, and with a tongue free to speak and ask the questions which need to be asked. If you want to adhere to the medical advice, follow medical advice at all times, not just when it suits you. If you wish to claim transparency, be transparent at all times. All else is hubris. Beware that hubris does not lead to your downfall. Smoke and mirrors will not sustain a free society. It will not satisfy a democratic society. It will not sustain a truth-based society. It will not enable growth in every area of our endeavours. I refuse to be a part of such a mindset. My byword, my philosophy is simple. Truth, freedom and growth.